<laughs> now, how do I get all this gear out there and the beer? That's the question. You'll manage. You'll manage. Okay, so we're gonna leave the beer behind for a moment. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. Hey there, so welcome to the video. As promised, we have a tour of the ship today. That's what we're going to focus on. I've also been asked for a description of what's the master plan, you know? I mean, what am I trying to accomplish with this boat? Where are we planning to go? What's the overall plan? We'll do that too. So first, let's do a tour. Down on the ground there. That's my dinghy. And the old bicycle that cost, I think, five dollars, which is at the end of its service life. So ignore the bike. But the dinghy is a pretty good dinghy. You know, it's an Avon. It inflates and it holds its air when it's filled. It's full of old fenders right now. One thing I'll say is that uh, with a dinghy, when you're traveling in far reaching places, you really don't want the latest, greatest, brand newest one because it just makes you a target for theft. Okay, so here's the tour of the boat. She's 42 foot long, 13 meters. It's, it's listed as a 13 meter boat, okay? And she's got two masts, okay? So she's a catch because the aftermast is forward of the rudder. That makes her a catch. If the aftermast was aft of the rudder, it'd be a yawl. But we're not gonna get too hung up on that kind of stuff. I'll be doing an interior tour as well. But first we're gonna notice up at the bow, the windlass closest to you, closest to the camera, is a manual windlass. And I crank that and get excellent exercise hauling all 100 meters of chain in. The starboard anchor has 100 meters of chain. The port anchor has a power windlass, which is run off of the 20, 24 volt DC bus. That has 50 meters of chain, but it's heavier chain. So probably good for an overnighter. You drop the uh, power windlass and there you go, you're, you're, you're hooked for the night. Underneath this area is the V-berth. Most sailboats, most boats have a V-berth. Because how else to use a triangular space? Well, most people put a bed in there. Most of the time, the, the pillows and the head of the bed is further aft and your feet go forward. And that's how mine is set up. Underneath here is an area which I'll call the living room, the salon, the kitchen, the, the galley. The last window of that four series. So <clears throat> the first round window, that's in the V-berth. So is that square hatch on, by the mast. The next two windows are for the salon and get in galley. And the aftermost window, the little, the, when it opens, that's where the head is. On the starboard side is where the washroom and shower are. On the port side, same exact window, that's where the toilet is. Okay, so carrying on. The raised area is what I call the cabin proper. You can almost look in the window, at least without the glare. I, I don't know how it looks in the camera. But uh, that's where we spend most of our time, to be honest. It's the warmest when the weather's cold and the sun is shining. You, you don't feel claustrophobic because you're looking outside and you got huge windows. So let's talk about rigging for a moment. Again, this is a catch. You see the aftermast and the forward mast. And it's a gaff rigger too. So it's a catch and it's a gaff rig. I'm going to zoom in because you don't have a single boom. I have two. There's a boom on the top and the boom on the bottom. And the boom on the top is called a gaff. The one on the bottom is called the boom. Compared to all the other boats here in the yard, I, in the skipjack, is grossly underpowered. 
I have a for sale, which is on a roller furler, which is good. And I'm going to have a main sale, and I'm going to have the mizzen sale. And when all three are deployed, I should be able to run downwind. That's what we think. But I won't run quickly. So most of the other boats here in the yard are going to outrun me. We, we get that, and we know that. So we're just going to see. We're just going to see. details on my boat, or the numbers are she's 13 meters, she's listed at 17 tons, that's what David said when he pulled her. Good heavy boat, 115 horsepower engine in there. Okay. So on, on the ascent, down at the bottom, you can see an enormous propeller. That's about almost, almost twice as big as most sailboat propellers. Because again, I'm a motor sailor. I'm made to operate by engine primarily. Got a huge rudder. Most of the other boaters here enjoy looking at the rudder because it's very well protected. So if I run aground, that huge, you can see the very, very thick inch and a half inch plate that's uh, on the very bottom of the keel, front to back. You know, that's what's gonna rub the bottom. And so my propeller and my rudder should be pretty well protected. Cheers! This is a beer I hadn't had before, <clears throat> but let's focus. Okay, we're facing aft. You've already been up there in the tour. To the right side, that's the toilet room. On the left side, shower room. Let's go check it out. Okay, so what we got here is a shower. Just a tile floor, big cabinet, normal sink, and a small shelf, and there's a window. You might be wondering why two shower curtains? There's one here and there's one there. Okay, so that's because when it's time for a shower, you pull that shower curtain across, and that keeps the cabinet dry and then you close you pull this one across it close the door and you have a pretty good shower setup so i've used it uh, many many times during my self-isolation sometimes i use the marina shower if i feel like but this room is pretty darn good uh, no complaints at all okay We're starting right back in the same place facing aft that's where the back door is and that's how we get out of the boat shower room and the sink for washing and this is the toilet room. So this would technically be called the head, I think, because that's where the toilet is. It has the cabinet against the hall, which is pretty good size as well. You know, no complaints. No complaints with this room at all. The, the normal bathroom stuff goes in here. This is a dry room in that there's no water in here. So there's not like there's anything that can leak. And it's complete, 100% complete, no further work to do except for shelving and hooks. Okay, passing down the steps again. Ignore the heater, ignore the galley. To the starboard side of the what used to be the saloon is where I call my living room or the saloon or my Chesterfield, okay? As you can see, it's not 100% complete and not 100% fitted out yet. This is where I go to chill out and relax in the evenings. It's uh, where I'll sit down and watch a movie. It's really quite comfortable. Above this area is a bed. So what you're looking at is a top bunk and a bottom bunk. The bottom bunk is not fitted out yet. I haven't purchased the mattress to go the full length. And I may not do that because I don't expect to need a third bed bunk on the boat or a fourth. The top bunk is going to be pretty tight and so I I'm using it 100% for storage that's why I built it and it's nominally a bunk so we call it the nominal bunk November Bravo it's just a, and there's a cabinet over there so it's my favorite place in a boat
Okay, the galley is forward. There's the toilet, the head. Refrigerator. Smallish, you know. But you see, not a whole lot of things in it. And there's really no need. Once you practice living without a fridge, then you're going to be fine. So you notice that I'm using an electric water kettle at the moment because I haven't correct, haven't repaired the propane system. So I don't want to fill it full of gas and then blow up the ship. Behind the kettle, <clears throat> behind the kettle is just an open cavity. There used to be a small oven there. Remember that thing? Yeah, so that, yeah, so I had to remove that because I needed to install that thing on the top. That is called the anti-siphon, anti-siphon for the gray water discharge. We talked about that in an earlier episode. In fact, you see I labeled it. So on the left side, that hose is coming from the pump. And on the right side, that hose is going overboard. So I needed to remove that old oven just for that access for that job. But I left the oven out. The previous owner said it didn't work well and and I didn't want anything that didn't work well because so right now the propane piping is um, copper swage lock fittings. And that's not the end of the world, but if you look behind this oven, in fact, uh, you'll see that the piping system is an amalgamation of uh, metric sizes, UK English standards and apparently some US standard sizes. It is just funky. So trying to get little fittings are, is very, very challenging. But that's okay because I don't. I think it's prone to leakage anyway. I have a leak, so I'm sure it is. I'm going to replace it all with orange hose. That's going to go from the propane bottle directly to this. This stove is designed to gimbal, so it'll rotate. As a ship moves, this will remain stable, just like the gimbaled cameras you see on GoPros and on, uh, you know, on drones. And after a number of months, we'll get to the right place where the weather's nice, where eating out is fun, and we'll chop this counter to pieces, and we'll put in a new counter, put in a new sink maybe, maybe a bigger sink too, or, or you know, a split sink, I don't know. You know that'll be the time to do it. Okay, upon entering the cabin, you're facing the driver's station. Inside the blue bag are the sails, which I have not put on yet. To the right side, though, pretty much ready to go, is the navigation station. On previous videos, you've seen... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so what is the plan? Okay, I've got the plan listed up here. And it's really pretty simple. Probably everybody has some sort of plan like this in their minds. And really, I, what I guess I want to point out to my team here is that number four, you know, you, ne you just never know. You know, we, we all change, things happen, right? So I don't know how things are going to go. In the short term, definitely quit the job, jump on the boat. We did that. Yeah, and I think we're making good progress on getting the boat ready for sea. And I think we'll be okay to get underway and move. And then really the big unknown is what happens after that. Because, you know, with the COVID issues, we just don't know if we'll even get to that decision point. Because the boat may or may not be the boat. That's the question. And we just don't know. I mean, yesterday, I swear, I, I would have I would have sold the boat yesterday if somebody had walked up and offered money for it. Because I was just tired of doing metal grinding, I was tired of doing shit work, and, and that's just, that's okay, right? So we all change. We all change. Yeah, so we change and you just never know. So yesterday, sitting here, getting all dirty, man, I, I would have moved to a tiki bar in Palau without question, you know, I would have I done it. Yeah, and so when we uh, get to the point where we have to decide, is this the boat? Well, there's a lot of things to discuss for that. Yeah, so... Okay, so the master plan is really just to quit working and start living. No different than what everybody else on the planet wants to do, if possible, okay? I mean, today we have crummy weather, but we did have a couple of weeks of good weather, so we got a lot of work done on the boat. So I just want to point out that, you know, if you had asked me yesterday to sell the boat and 
run away and go do something different, I'd have done it because I was just tired of doing dirty work. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good overall. I'm, I'm eager to be done with the dirty work and eager to get this boat underway. So we'll see. You just never know. On any given moment, I might just decide, yeah, I don't want to do this anymore. And you'll hear that I've moved to some, you know, dive resort in Palau. I don't know. I, I just don't know what's going to be in the future. And of course, none of us can hold each other accountable for that sort of thing. So I'm, I'm enjoying this. I am damn sure looking forward to getting this boat underway and heading south and then just see what happens. Take care, everybody. Bye.